Welcome back to part two of our series on how to build the tunnel boring machine. Uh, I did have to split this part into two different videos, so if you missed the first part, go ahead and check that out. Uh, this is the second part of this uh, machine where we are actually going to build the docking station for the horizontal flying machine. Uh, with that being said, if this are on part two, or as I'm going to call this, part two and a half. We'll go ahead and jump in, and I won't hold you back anymore. Thanks for watching. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step, which is actually putting in the spaghetti, which will go ahead and fire all of this and get it lined up properly. So what would happen right now if we tried to send the flying machine? If you tried to update this observer? You see, nothing happens. That's because there are far more than 12 blocks in front of those pistons. So what we actually need to do is we need to create a space between each segment of the machine. That way, as soon as it starts to fly, it will go ahead and update correctly. So to do that, we're going to come down back by the engine, where there's this bottom sticky piston. We're going to go ahead and place one block of glazed terracotta, and then we're going to place a redstone torch underneath uh, the solid block attached to our machine. Uh, you may recognize this as the setup for a smart piston, and that is essentially the same mechanism that we're going to use. So to continue, I'm going to go ahead and add in, I have this green will for this step of the machine. I'm going to place in two blocks uh, to either direction from our solid block. You can see when we have a solid block there, lines come on. Uh, this line to the back, or this line that goes this way, is what we're going to use to set up the spacing mechanism. And then this line over here is what we're going to use to send up the pushers. Then what we need to do is we need to essentially create enough delay in the circuit that it won't fire right away. So the easiest way to do that is we're just going to add in a bunch of uh, repeat. Then we're going to set all of these to the maximum number of ticks. Because essentially what we need it to do is we need the machine to come in, and as soon as the engine hits, it's going to send a pulse down through here. However, the rest of these uh, components are going to take a few more seconds to get to their final resting place. So we're just building in a little bit of delay. Then what we're going to do, have one We'll have one bit of redstone dust at the very end. Then we're going to put a repeater. Oh, facing the wrong way. We're going to place an observer looking at the redstone dust. So then that observer is going to fart into another solid block. And that solid block is going to push a sticky piston. Then we're going to grab another one of our diamond block markers. Uh, again, it could be any solid block that you wanted to. I'm just using diamond uh, purely for demonstration. Then we're going to put in another system where it's got the redstone torch and a repeater that will face into the diamond block. So essentially, when the observer gets an update, so this line turns on, it will fire the uh, sticky piston. That will send a block in. It will then power the circuit. And then when it turns off, it will just turn it off. Then from here, what we need to do 
we're going to start wiring in these different parts. Basically, each segment that we had built before, we're going to build a, uh, a mechanism too, because um, we need to fire off this tier three, get that pushed one block forward, and then we push off the tier two, and then we push off the tier one, and then when we want to fire it, we can turn on the engine and it will continue on its merry way. Why don't we go ahead and get this built up? Actually need to step this down a little bit. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm just gonna create a block of wool or a line of wool blocks. Again, I'm just using the colored wool as a way to keep straight which wiring is for which part. I think it's super helpful when you're working on larger redstone projects, but you can use whatever you'd like, or if you're building it on the ground like I did down there, you can just build it on the ground. Okay. So the first place that we need to update, we're just going to bring in a line of the wool. <clears throat> and we want to put it in line uh, tier two because essentially what we want is we want to be able to fire these observers so that way it'll push this forward now the easiest way to do that at least the easiest way that i've found is you use a glass staircase i tried it with um with a redstone torch ladder. However, redstone torches don't fire at once. They actually fire uh, in order. And so for part of this, you do need it to fire all at the same time. Otherwise, it's going to mess up the machine. <clears throat> so why don't we go ahead and drop this down one more. And then essentially what we're going to do is that, and we're just going to wire this all the way up. So you can see if I go ahead and I place on just a torch to power it real quick, it creates just that little bit of space. And that's essentially what we're going to do. So why don't I go ahead and remove that? And we'll go ahead and tackle the next one real quick. For the next carriage pusher, we're going to essentially do the same thing. But the only two that we need to really care about are this one and that one. Those are the only two that drive the sticky pistons that push things forward. So what I'm going to do is the exact same thing. I'm just going to build a small uh, glass elevator. Or glass staircase with the redstone wire it just like that and bring in our green wool there we go so now if we power this one and then we power that one you can see how the segments begin to separate that's exactly what we're looking for fire it And now we're back to where we started. But then the last one that we need to take care of is actually right next to it. So that becomes a little bit trickier, uh, but it is definitely doable. So we're going to go ahead. And for this one, I just use solid block. And the way to make sure that the redstone signals don't get connected with either this glass elevator or uh, the one down there is we just use two repeaters. And that actually helps us out a little bit because we need some delay between when this one fires and when that one fires. I'll go ahead. 
add in a four. So we have six repeaters worth of delay. Then again, count. I want to go ahead and set them up to their maximum picks. A lot of this whole part really just down to the timing. So if you're on a server that has a little bit of lag, your timings are going to be off here or there by a couple ticks. You can just tack in a repeater and then modify the ticks until you get it to work smoothly. Fairly simple. Um, but every server is just a little different. So I don't want to be like, you absolutely have to do this because. Okay. So essentially what we're going to do. Go ahead and connect. Our stone. So I'm just connecting up wiring here. Down. There we go. So then what we're going to do, actually need to build in a little bit more delay into the system. So we're going to add one repeater there. Then we'll redstone snake our way down. Then we're going to add one more part to our last one. So we'll actually end up with seven on top instead of six. That modifying this one slightly. Then we're going to come out here to the one that is furthest out. And we're going to go ahead and add in one repeater in. I set that one to three ticks. Essentially, that one is providing just a touch of delay, and also it provides enough power for the redstone to make it all the way in. For this middle one, we want to go ahead and add in two repeaters set to their maximum, so four ticks each. Why don't we go ahead and give that a shot, and we'll make sure that it fires correctly. So again, we're just going to come back to this first observer, and we're going to update it once. Go. So you can see all of the segments have their own individual space, and that is perfect. That is exactly what we need to happen. So the very, very last part on this side is we need to add in an observer tower right here, fire these sticky pistons. And that is going to, we, each time the machine flies, you need to correct a tier three carriage. So this is just the quick way of doing that. Just when it turns around, it will, uh, on this end, we'll need to update these carriages three times. It'll just end up slightly offline. And then again, at the other side, it will again be off by exactly three. So we're just going to go ahead and essentially wire in a circuit that will update this with three pulses. To do that, part of it's simple, part of it's a little bit complicated because to build pulses, not two. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get started with that. Again, we're going to use a glass elevator because this one gets very, very picky where you do need to make sure that it gets updated all at the same time. If these get updated one and then another, it's not going to work at all. And that's where issues come in. I'm going to go ahead and one. Redstone line. Go. 
our redstone. And if you had a fourth carriage, you would just go ahead and make this one block taller. Then, basically what we need to do is each time it comes in, this is going to update one. So it's either going to turn on or it's going to turn off. And so we need to split that down into three distinct pulses, separate updates for the observer. In order to separate this pulse into separate ones, go ahead and we're going to have our repeater out from our main line then some redstone dust is going to go around the corner real quick one space gap then at the end of that redstone dust place a sticky piston then we're going to place an observer coming out of the observer we're going to place another repeater one we want to set to the vertex as well just going to go ahead and combine that down to our glass elevator. From here, to go forward and around, I want to make sure that we have six or six repeaters, and they're all going to be maxed out, so a total of 24 ticks. Five and So essentially, the way that this works is the pulse is going to come through. So it's going to be on. No, it'll be off. Go ahead and do that. But then when it machine arrives, push that through. The observer will turn the pulse on, which is one update. It will then turn off, which is two. And then this following line will come in and stay on for a total of the updates. So that's how we are able to split our one constant stream down into uh, distinct pulses which are enough for these observers to update. So the very, very last bit that we have to do is we need to put in our mechanism that will turn it on. So keeping in line with what we had done with our starter, I'm just going to go ahead and use blue wool. And it's a very simple trigger. Do gap underneath. Just going to the staircase goes right up to this observer. This is the observer that is going to trigger the entire flying machine. This is your input line, which you would connect up to your drill head output line. I'm not actually going to fire it because we don't have anything at the far end. And this entire thing would go into oblivion. But you'd just place that one redstone dust, and then you would be set. So why don't we go ahead and tackle the station on the other end, and then that will be everything for this part of the video. Go from there. Okay, so I'm now at the far end of this platform, where we had just finished up setting up all the spaghetti on that side. Now we're going to do the same on this side. So to start out, we're going to come down to where our wall is. We're going to give ourselves that same one block gap for the sticky pistons. Then we're going to come out on to count 20 blocks from the end of the machine. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 11. And up here is where we are going to place our obsidian pillar. 
And now the pillar does need to be the same height as your drill. Um, because you have those four tier three modules and each one needs a backstone to hit. Uh, this side is much easier to do. So what I'm actually going to do to send the machine down, that way we have our template to back up against it. it as a reference point for the build. Go. We're just going to place that redstone dust. Post production, Klutzy is going to come in and provide a slight update. I did have to go through and add in another set of uh, repeaters. So I reworked it so that uh, to go to our uh, class elevator where it had just the two, it is now all three of these are wired together. Where we have two full repeaters and then seven repeaters. I also added in three tick repeaters before we got into our separator, and that was able to get the machine to work just fine. So I just wanted to come in. I'm sorry for the slight correction when I was troubleshooting it, uh, it kept getting hung up, so I did add in just a little play that way it would run smooth. And now, back on with the show. So here's what we're working with. At the far end of the machine, everything comes in and it rests right on the obsidian pillar. That is exactly what we actually have a few extra blocks. We can go ahead and eliminate those. Uh, you could keep them there if you wanted to, or you could just have it floating like that. So we need to go ahead at this point, go ahead and make a slight modification to our flying machine. Similar to how on the other end we had the solid block on the engine, we're going to come down on this lower one, or I suppose probably choose any, but I always put it on the lower one, place a solid block there as well. Uh, for the similar logic, we're just going to go ahead and be putting in a smart uh, piston type device, and that is uh, what is going to carry our signal through. So I'm going to place in another glazed terracotta key down like that, redstone torch underneath our new solid block. And that is going to be how we, again, connect to the device that is going to reset our observers. And then we're also going to run another line down to our pushers. That's what this back line will be. That's going to be a separate video. I'm going to finish this one and then I will start working on that one. So hopefully that one will be out within a week. Doing my best, but holidays are here. And so just have to take it one day at a time. Similar to how on the other end where we got it to update three times, we need to do the exact same thing here. So we had gotten that by out a line of pull around. Again, we're going to redstone dust, sticky piston, and we're going to have an observer facing out of it. So again, the observer pulse will be one and two, and then we're going to go ahead and bring a solid line of redstone around, and that will be number what it's going to look. Go ahead and put a repeater just outside of the observer. That way it has maximum redstone power. Then let's build our elevator. spot. So similar to how on the other end we had to use observers to fire these, that exact same thing. Add it that. Place servers firing directly into the sticky pistons. 
and then we will place, place our glass elevator going up into those. At. Go down. Go. At. And then I did notice that redstone doesn't like to go down glass elevators. Um, so if you try to wire it in like just straight across here, it would only go up. Not sure if that's just an issue on this server or if other servers have that as well. So just a thing to find that it's here, like where we just make one little step down, that way it all wires up correctly. And go ahead and do that same thing where we're gonna add in six meters, set to full ticks. Wrapping around here. So that is how you reset these observers. So the only other part that we need to do for this end, this end is a lot easier because when the engine starts to pull, it will actually go ahead and pull it correctly. We don't need to space it out on the station floor. So the way that we trigger this flying machine, on the engine we have the lowest server. And that is the one that powers it. We'll send it that way. So again, I had used red, or red, red flower, blue thorns, red flower, blue, um, blue wool as the starting platform wiring. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue that here, and build a staircase down, and that would connect up to our drill platform. So all we need to do is just plug that right in. So when we update this, go ahead and send machine on its way. So that is what we need to do. That is the entire build for this. The only thing like I was telling you earlier is you may need to fine tune. Otherwise that is gonna happen. So why don't I show you how we go about fine tuning this thing. Uh, once it gets down to the other end, and then I will reset all of these drill heads, and we can go about tuning it. That way you have an idea how to do the same thing. So we've got the machine docked back here at the station, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to make sure that it is tuned properly to pull only the correct blocks. Because you saw what happened when we sent it last time, it was pulling the sticky pit slime head, and if the the drill heads were full, this is actually what it would look like. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to fix that so that it doesn't, so that it pulls only the correct blocks, which is kind of the whole point of having this carriage, isn't it? So what we do, and I'm going to go ahead and try and do some production magic again, where I'm going to put up the same little picture guide of uh, tier three observer positions. Again, we have one, two, three, and four. Uh, each one of those is going to correspond to uh, a different alignment of these two observers. So on the uh, demo machine, the correct combination that I had was uh, four and two. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and reset these into that. So four for me was the very top one, which we of course don't have on this model. So I'm just going to set down to a two, four, and then a two again. So that is actually in the correct position. This one, this, come over one, that. And this bottom one, we read over to there. Okay. So for me, 
that's what it would look like in a two or an a two position. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to send the machine again. And it's just a little bit of trial and error here to find the correct combination. Yeah, and you can see that this is not it that continues to pull everything. So if you want to go ahead and shorten this up, you can, instead of doing a full run, we apparently don't do that because that's going to break it. So let's go ahead and get this reset back again, and then we will try a different combination. Okay, so now that we've got it docked, let's go ahead, we'll fix our drill. Show us again, give us another idea of what's going on. Again, if we do this correctly, none of these drill heads will be pulled forward. So we just want to go ahead and did shorten the track a little bit, so that way we're only doing half just enough to get a good idea of where we're at with it. It's done. So this time we're going to go ahead and try a th and a one. If that combination works. And again, it is just doing this till you have the right combination. They will always be offset by two, so a two, four, a four, two, a three, one, a one, three. They're always going to be two apart. Go ahead and set this up. One stacked. Bottom two. Server to be. I'm here I'm just going to send it again. Again, it is just trial and error, sinus, science at its finest. Once we get this dialed in, I will go ahead and give you guys. Oh, there we go. That's it. Where it doesn't pull on those, then it pulls the correct blocks. So this machine turned out to be a 3 1. And that is smoothing plate done and dusted so after this video i appreciate you guys watching all the way through uh, if you guys are having any issues tuning this uh, feel free to let me know i will try and help you out as much as i can uh, if it does if there are any common problems that i have i will try and put out a faq uh, a tuning video i guess and Go from there but again i really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today uh, sorry for the delay on the video we're just getting into that crazy time of year but i will try my hardest to get the next part out as soon as possible and catch you in the next one